that's robbing Peter to pay Paul, though? I mean, we're <laughs> just moving the but money it's, around. It's, different but it's proving a point, right? If we're if we're willing to pay for it anyway, I think it sends a message that, uh, you know, I don't want to say dereliction of duties. I feel that's probably a bit harsh, and I know that they're working hard on the water. Um, I think this is just a service that should not have been removed. Great. Great. Well, I know it would go a long way. Well, I wouldn't say a long way, but the whole, um, all the residents around Reed and Barton, um, you know, including myself, I'm not far from there, but it's, um, you know, they're really, and rightly so, upset. And so if we can do something, at least a small gesture, I think it would go a little way, not a long way, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, what's scary, Meg, about that water, their water situation, it's not manganese and iron, it's the stuff you don't see, right? And that's, that's the scary that's the scary stuff in water, right? The manganese iron, you see it, it's disgusting, you don't want to drink it, you don't want to go near it. The stuff they're talking about, you don't see. They've had three, like, on, you know, again, you can't relate it yet, but three cases of cancer on Talbot Drive. Um, and not like, you know, it was young, it was middle, you know, it was sort of a random selection. So I, it's pretty scary. Um, yeah, I can't say it's, it's like the that, water. the Aaron Rockman story, right? I mean, that's, that's how it started, the clusters of, of cancer. And water is just that necessity. Like, I, I feel like that's, you know, that's our number one responsibility Mike I know we've been banging this drum for about a year since since it for, for a year and I you know something I'm not I haven't been as successful as I wanted to do to get a private person here but at this point I really kind of want to move this forward and I guess the question is is what are the action items that are coming out of this discussion right now um, for to, to make something happen for, for the residents over over there um, well the first thing is I'll check with council to see if we can put it in um, and then build the water and sewer back for that. Um, the s second one would be that if, uh, you know, you and I can reach out to the new water and sewer commission and see if they would be acceptable to it. Okay. Um, and do you not believe that there would be any private company that would want to go in there from what you heard? So do so I reached out to Simpson Springs. They just could, they didn't have the capacity right now. I reached out to Belmont Springs over in Brockton and they were not able, I was not able to get through to them to, to a point of, of, of response or even a okay. for them. Well, let's work on it together and see which way we yeah. can do it. Yeah, because I really, sooner or later, I have to, I have to earn my buck here, right? <laughs> so this is something that I'm passionate about. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I, I think uh, for those of us who have sat with you during um, during the last several months and watched you try to, to take this battle on, I mean, we, we you you've done a tremendous amount of work, and your dedication here is is not unnoticed. So, Thank you. you know, hope, hopefully you can bring it home because I think uh, you know it's great for the town, and um, certainly it's always nice to have some some positive reinforcements. But I think I think you and Mike will be, I think you guys will be successful. I mean, let's be clear, be clear. You wrote the SOP for them to properly operate that machine during the pandemic, and then they they removed it anyway. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. Um, on to our next um, lingering issue: discussion on reservoir signage. Um, this is the new bylaws that I believe were adopted. Uh, I believe this also touches on the perennial juniper beach issue uh, i heard today that the no parking sign in at juniper beach is about 15 feet up on a tree and not very effective unless you're a bird i'll, I'll look at it and i know keith had it's up there. Print, keith had print, printed up um something like 17 signs so uh working with jennifer to find out you know what locations and then i also want to um work with Jennifer on the other terminology that should be put on the signs about cleaning the boats or whatever. Um, so I know uh, she was busy this week, but the next week we'll get on it. Is, Mike, are we at a point where that we should be having a, a maybe a, a uh, committee to kind of just review all these? Like we talked about like those stones at Juniper Beach. 
I don't, I'm not going to say that's the solution, but for me, it would make sense to move those stones to the other side so you're not disturbing those people, the houses there. You just well, pray. Um, we, we got a, um, money from Serpa. They're doing a boat access study right now. And, you know, every Saturday, Jennifer's meeting at different locations along the reservoir. Um, so hopefully out of that, they're going to come out with some ideas. As long as you don't get rid of the rock, that's my childhood right there. <laughs> if, if you we, want, we can move them to your house. Yes, okay. <laughs> 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 Put some right in your bag in your yard, and then some in mine, and it's like a halfway split, so we're good. <laughs> right. So, so Mike, what I know that there was a, a lengthy email that was sent on this. What, what was, what was discussed before? Like putting up no parking signs and putting up the the signs on maintaining the um, bylaw. The bylaw? Yeah, the bylaw on. Uh, How do you get a bylaw onto a sign? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Jared's good at that. Okay. That's, why, that's why it's 15 feet high and then it actually goes to the ground. <laughs> it's actually yeah, that's the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had talked before about gates down there. And I mean, for, for me, this is just one of those frustrating issues. And I think I. I responded to um, Mr. Lennon's email with this, that I'm frustrated that we haven't found a way to, to thread the needle. I know there's a lot of uh, variables to try to balance out between the, the resi residents on the side street versus the residents on the main street with the rocks. If you remove the rocks, now the people that are beyond the rocks get, a, get frustrated. Like you have the, that is a legally required public beach. So you need to be able to have access there, but the parking area is too small. Um, it just just vexes me, Mike. Yeah. I don't know what we can do about it. Let me talk to Jennifer on the study that Serpent's doing. How much of it would go in depth there, or do we have to do that separately? So one of the things I think we talked about maybe at the close of last season was designating the um, the town-owned property on Mansfield Ave as a car top load-in site. Um, can we start promoting that and inform the individual who's living there not to chase people away who are following that direction? Yeah, we definitely uh, can let, anyone can park there and do that. And then we're also waiting for the state. Remember the state is gonna develop that site, um, fish and game. So, uh, but um, when Jennifer and I talked last week um, about having Keith put some public parking signs up um, on that property where people can come in and park right now. So, and again, I'll just make sure the renter is aware that this is mm -hmm. viable. Uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that that individual has um, angrily confronted some people and chased them away and said that okay. that's not, a, not a, an approved thing. I'll make sure both renters uh, understand that. Hey Mike, do you know if, uh, if in Jen's study, um, remember we talked about that property that I thought there was a boat ramp and it used to have a pavilion? Uh, South Lakeview? Maybe. Um, I know, shoot, that was one of the sites last week, um, South Lakeview, that they went at. Okay. There used, so used to be like, uh, actually it was like the Grove Community Building was there, that property at one point. There was a Grove Association. And, right, uh, right. They had a building on that. And it burned down, right? Right, yep. And is that is that now town property? Or it was is. it then? Okay. It wasn't then, but it is now. And um, that was where they they met last week at one of the sites. Okay, and that's a pretty big area, right? Like where, I mean, just from an open space perspective, like if we had parking and a pavilion, it could be something nice for the community. Mm -hmm. yep. Even if it's not, it'd be even better if it could be a boat launch, but or a ramp. Ramp anyways. Yeah. So are we talking about the um, the lot at the end of Hawthorne where it intersects with South Lakeview? Um, where the street's named? Yeah. Uh, let, let me, uh, I'll share my maps. I'm just, I know Renee, years ago you and I had gone out there and we had looked at that with, uh, with Paula, I believe. Um, just trying to orient myself in this area. So 
zoom out. Juniper Beach is is right there. So I believe it's either this large area here or this. It's that that one. The, that one you're on right now. Okay. Right, kind of where that the lip goes inward. There's a an open space area where you can right now like just walk across the field. Yeah. Yeah, and then just okay. kind of downwards. There's somebody's house there. Yeah, right, right about north of that. Okay. And um, and those rocks, right? Those are big rocks there. Like yeah, you used to be able to drive and park in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then, yeah, you can see the rocks at the top of Hawthorne right there. Yeah. Okay. It's a really nice, you know, property. I know neighbors that I've grown up with, they've all wanted to see something go there. You know, whether it not be like a like a little baseball field or something something useful than just an open field where people walk their dogs and poop and then leave the poop there because yeah. So what you're saying is a nice pavilion, some picnic tables, along with a dog poop would, would be appropriate? <laughs> Everything but the dog poop that you just said would be appropriate. <laughs> yeah. I saw a, uh, I can't remember where it was, um, but it's not, it wasn't too far from here, but I remember driving past and they had, they'd converted like a field area like that with um, benches and, mm -hmm. and picnic tables, like nothing fancy, but just putting stuff out there for the community to come together and still be social distance. Um, It'd be nice if we had opportunities like that for this. I don't know who would that go through, like rec or conservation. Like, who, who could we ask to look, look into that? Conservation, more than likely, on that. Yeah. The like committee or Jen? Or um, I would start with Jen. Okay. Is that something you can ask her about? Yeah. Would you mind? Thank you. It would be nice to see what they found from the study. I was across from there, and it's a beautiful place, and and with this land could be used either as a ball field or a dog park. Dog park would be fun. Like that. We just talked about the poop check. <laughs> well, I wasn't clear. Is it so? Is it the dogs that are pooping, or is it the people that are pooping? Because it, uh, it could go. I don't look close enough to tell the difference, so. <laughs> well, we can take that Disgusting time. animals. Stick with the cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should we go there with the lure box or no? I, I think we just. Can you tell that it's been a long week of meetings? Yes, we're long. getting delirious. We are. All right. Uh, as we head into hour four, uh, we have the uh, discussion of Trent Memorial location and expectations. Uh, this item was prompted by uh, an email from Bob Kimball as um, the chair of the Gold Star Committee, uh, noting that the uh, contractor for the West Main Street work had left uh, a large amount of rusty you know, trench boxes and plates and whatnot right at the back end of the memorial and really um, detracting from its intended purpose. So I know some stuff has been moved. Um, there's I was there not too long ago. There were still some additional things, so we had a conversation about what is appropriate for that. It's warranted. Um, yes, um, Mr. Chairman, they, I was out there today. They have moved almost everything away from the Trent Memorial now. Oh, so what's to stop them from putting something back there the next time they need to drop something off at 4.30 on a Friday? Um, you have to have Michael contact the water and sewer commissioners and tell them <laughs> it's water and sewer uh, property. So um, I think they understand now. And uh, I did talk with Steve Peterson, the engineer, uh, today and uh, explained it to him. And he, he mentioned they were moving everything away. And so he must have emphasized it to them. <laughs> Crazy idea. Um, is it possible to designate that as an area that would deserve some sort of privacy fence, some sort of ornamental thing? Because even without that uh, material there, the, the back of that lot is nothing special to look at. Well, that's one of the lots that we're looking at uh, for parking. 
Uh, so when we do something as far as developing that parking lot, we should look into that, uh, putting up at some fencing. Could that possibly qualify as a as a Boy Scouts project? I'm just thinking, could we do something sooner rather than later? I know they tend to need to be focused on a community thing, and I think mm -hmm. that would fit the bill. Yeah, I think they'd be all over that, Jack. Yeah. Um, so, Michael, I know you have some connections with uh, yeah, the BSA. I can, I, I can pitch that out as one of the ideas if the committee's okay, if the board's okay with that. I'll pitch that out there and try to give you, give Mike and everyone an up, give you and Mike an update on if that be let them get in touch with you and Mike to try to organize that. That's great. I, I would honestly suggest uh, Mr. Kimball and Mike on that. Um, okay, I think I'll push them over. So can I ask where the memorial is? Is, is that considered um, the water department's land? It, it is water department land. They uh, let the Trent committee build that on their property. Okay. Should we have that transferred to the town at some point? Yeah, we could do that. Um, I don't think, I don't, obviously they're not gonna use it again, so I don't know why they wouldn't do with that. Have, have to talk to Paul and see about uh, planning and zoning. Uh, would it be a legal lot? Can we do it? <laughs> so, well, that, that probably goes along with the parking lot conversation, right, Mike? Because that would happen if if we converted it yeah maybe we can do it all in one yeah i don't think there's any rush there i think you're right there's they're not gonna pick that up so anything else on on that one just so you know it'll be dave dumont and uh roger um marston that'll be forwarding over to uh, mike and uh, mr kimball awesome Uh, moving on, item 10, discuss and or vote on emergency authorizations. It's time to renew these. Mike, do you have this? I don't know if it's in there yet. So I found this uh, in my mailbox after Jen gave us the reminder to go and clean out our mailboxes. Dated from, uh, I don't know how, March of 19. But it has, uh, my, I think I sent a picture of this, right? It has, um, you have designated James to sign payroll sheets, and then you authorize Brad uh, as the chair to exercise the powers and perform to the town manager during them, and if an unplanned absence should occur. So I think this is yours. Yeah. We did that. Um, when did COVID start? Was that before COVID? <laughs> Um, no, you know, it's dated March 19, 2020, so it was yeah. three days after our emergency meeting, yeah. It, that's what it was. It was uh, when COVID started, just in case. Yeah. So should we, uh, since we're still in the uh, emergency declaration, should we update that yeah. to uh, yeah. to Jack? Yep. Is that something the board has to, I think we, we voted on it, didn't we? Is this something uh, we voted on? I can't remember. No. I don't know if you did vote on that, but uh, that would be fine if you vote on it. And uh, hopefully it doesn't have to be used. I won't get. Uh... Yes. Hope not I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the towns. What are you talking about? Okay. So uh, um, I'll just, I don't need to read this whole thing, do I? No. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll move that uh, the board supports um, the update to the emergency authorizations, if necessary, in which uh, Mike would designate um, town accountant James uh, well to sign payroll timesheets, payroll warrants, purchase orders, and general expense bills, um, and all other matters. Uh, the authorization uh, would be for Jack Conway, chairman of the board, uh, the select board. To exercise the powers and perform the duties of town manager during an unplanned, um, abs if an unplanned absence should occur. Back there. Okay. Motion and a second. Uh, Christine. Yeah. Meg. Yes. Michael. Hi. Renee. Yes. Am I to say yes? I don't remember if that was something thrown it on, but. It's done if needed. But Mike, this is one that you signed. And um, Jen, I imagine you have, 
Do you need me to, to scan the copy or do you have the file? I do have it, thank you. Okay, thanks. Continuity of the town, love it. I just can't believe I, I it's been sitting there for a couple of weeks I've been meaning to bring it up and I forgot. Um, all right. Uh, thank you for checking your mail. I still haven't been. Um, next up, uh, discuss and or vote on public meetings uh, slash temporary protocols due to COVID-19. I believe what sparked this is um, the school committee is meeting in person for the first time since the pandemic started. I think in a show of solidarity with the, the students returning to the classroom, they felt uh, it important to, to join them uh, with in-person meetings. Not sure how that plays into our earlier emergency declaration. We need to update any of the, the procedures or protocols that were put in place. So I, I don't know either. Um, town council hadn't hadn't responded to the request um, to opine on this, but I think you know the temporary protocols. I know we talked about it previously. Um, they're a little bit outdated because we have mentioned in there, you know, only have meetings on um, essential business or critical business, right, that you need to. But obviously, we've adjusted and um, with the use of the, the virtual technologies, we've been able to actually conduct normal business. Um, so I, I think maybe for discussion here, um, I don't know if we'd want to vote before something's actually updated, but we make some changes to that um, just to note, um, you know, that, that any it's more, I guess, red tape, right, that any uh, type of business by uh, public bodies or uh, the boards um, could be held virtually. And then I don't know if we want to consider, um, and I'm going to kind of go into my work mode, right, but if we want to consider protocols, um, at which point we would we would allow in-person meetings. Um, we still, because of the governor's uh, emergency order, we don't have to have a quorum in person. We don't know if that's going to change long term um, based on, on the response, you know, throughout the pandemic. Uh, but I would think at a minimum, we should at least consider, you know, what, what does it look like when people come back, right? The schools are, are fortunate because they've, they've been practicing these guidelines the entire year in social distancing, mask, sanitation, um, uh, enhanced cleaning protocols. Um, I don't know that we have that capability or, or we practice that anywhere else in town. So, you know, it, other conversations have also um, led to, well, what if it's um, vaccinate, fully vaccinated persons only in person, um, still following social distancing and mask requirements. Um, you know, I, I think it's just, I know it's, it's 10, 15, um, but if we have some ideas on that, I can draft something up. We can get it in front of Chris and uh and come back collectively to look at it and modify and, and potentially vote um but it's kind I of like it, phase i two. think I, yeah i was gonna say i, I don't know I, I everyone you know people are coming back online i'm back at work five days a week like i think we need to start you know moving in a direction of um you know getting back to some normalcy i mean i wear a mask all day at work and you know um i don't see I think it would be, you know, again, depending on, I don't know what the, the rules for open meeting and how many people can be in the room, but I, I don't think you're going to get many people showing up. I'll just tell you that. No, um, no I, I agree, but, you know, when, when people want to, like, what what do we want to consider to, to update in this policy? I think, Renee, I think one of the things, Chairman Matt, uh, I think one of the key things here, and, and, you know, Renee, I've been saying we should open town hall and all this stuff, but we still are, the town is still yelling, right? Uh, so, which tells us that we're not, we're not, we're, not, we're still on kind of a warning level. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and even though I, I, I still think that it's to, to, to make this point, we have to start get finding a sense of normalcy here, um, but I'm still cautious, right? So, I think as the town moves forward, I think the, uh, it should tie into what where we are. If we're red, if we're yellow, if we're green or no color at all, that's what we should maybe use as a guideline to reopen. Sure, sure, we could, we could put that in the protocols. Because I think that's ready, that's being consistent of what this, what the, what the, what this all started with the governor's declaration and that coloring would, would, would follow that, that those declar declaration would, would, would follow the kind of the reopening schedule. Mr. Chairman, um, I did get, um, a call from the chairman of the Council on Aging, and she was wondering they they wanted to look 
start meeting um, at the Council on Aging, have their board meetings, and I did mention to her that I, you were bringing this up tonight, and so I'd get back to her um, when something is decided. And and when the in-person meetings resume soon, gonna be back there, gonna be bringing my notepads and taking the notes the way it was before this pandemic hit, right? Absolutely. You miss those days, Peter. So, Renee, I do think I do think one of the discussions that need to be had that if someone tests positive or if something like like you can't be meeting, right? I mean, we've heard crazy this whole process, right? We've seen people go to out even though they're supposed to be quarantining. I think those are important things that we need to make sure that we make very clear that if there's a if a situation you need to enforce quarantines, if we decide to go back to meetings, so. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, again, it's, it's, this is for discussion, right? We can say, look, people have to have to do self temperature checks, right? And and we provide a, a thermometer that everybody would use when they come in. I mean, it's it's really, you know, it's it's what do we feel um, the requirements should be, and at what point do those requirements go into effect? I, I think this is this is not like an overnight. Hey, write it up and we're done with it. Um, I think it's going to take some time, but I think given where we are, I mean, I, I anticipate, you know, in, in the next month, we're, we're going to be kind of looking more at a, I don't want to say shutdown, but looking more at a, uh, an at home type situation um, because it's, it's just coming across the globe that much faster. Um, but I think it would be good for us to consider this. And Michael, I like your idea of, of using those risk levels because then we can, we can tie requirements around that for in person, not in person. Um, you know, one of the things the school committee did too is they did not allow public access, right? And, and you don't have to allow in-person access as long as there's the access to the meeting which you're doing virtually, right? So that, that reduces it too. I mean, you know, from a school perspective, um, they're, they're a little bit farther ahead in the vaccination um, area too. You know, we can even take into account vaccination rates. You know, if, if we feel like we wouldn't do something until Norton hits 50% or Crystal County is 50 percent. Like it's it's really for us to consider, and I think Chris will probably have some things to weigh in. Chris and Donna as well. But this is this is one of the things that really does worry me. Is and um, I, I respect the school committee, but they had they've already had the meeting in person. Um, even though this board had said no meetings, uh, they, this the school committee, as much as they are as independent from this board and so forth. That does come. That those rules come from this board, and it, it's very troubling to me. Because then, what stops the council on aging saying, you know, something we disagree with you. You know, some of the water commission we disagree with you. Like that. That's a very troubling. Thing. And, and I know I, I don't want to be overly too harsh and critical because everyone has different opinions here of, a, of an independent board. But it, it's it's it was very troubling when I heard that they were having a person meeting um, because we still have this rule in place. Like it, don't like it. It is a rule set by this board. I think that's a that's a fair point, Michael. I can understand their logic for doing so, but I also Absolutely. believe that it's that it sets uh, a worrisome precedent on, on that. And my my um, seventh grader was sent home today from the middle school for close contact. <laughs> so, there you go. My, my right. son's been out all week. My son's quarantined all week. He came back negative. Well, well, again, I mean, it goes it goes back to, you know, it's, it's there's a reason why kids are in school, what they're trying to do, because it, it helps, you know, not only the kids and the behaviors, but it helps the economy. But but why take why take an unnecessary risk, right? Like, I get it, you want to do it in solidarity of the students, but you're not the students, right? Like, there, there are two different things, and it's, it's, it's risk versus uh, um, really necessity. Well, yeah. So, we made, we, this board, which I was not a member of, made a decision, it was a very tough decision, it was a very thought out decision. It was a two hour, three hour meeting when you guys had that. We had these discussions. And now we have a board that basically said, you know, we disagree and we're gonna do it in solidarity. Well, you know something, realistically, the chair of that committee should have been here saying this is what we're doing and asking asking us to really leave that that for them it, it really it's very troubling to me that we where we we were hearing it through the hearsay and there was no formal 
request to us, this board, for an exemption? Well, again, Mike, I, I don't know, you know, while we declared an emergency in the town and, and we put these procedures in place, is there something different for another elected board? Right? And I, I don't know. We had this conversation early on, and I don't remember the answer on whether or not, um, I remember reading some material on it, um, whether or not the school committee itself would have to have to vote to be virtual. And, and that's that was the question of town council that we have not heard back. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and just, you know, because we, we collaborate and, and, you know, with the school committee, it, it would have been nice to, to have had it, but I could also see, too, in the, in the rush of things that the thought may not have occurred to them. And guess what? I'll apologize to the school committee, but I, the way that I would understand it would be, why would we make that declaration to all the boards in town if, if we did not feel empowered by the governor to, to, to enact such, such limits? In, in, in we turn in the first meeting, hopefully soon. I believe they need to be held at the Naughton Media Center, right? You can't be back in town hall, that's for sure. So it'll be at, at the Naughton Media Center, right, Jack? Uh, I'm sorry, we'll, my, my daughter came in when you guys were talking. Is Do we have any, is the select board, because, I mean the school committee, because it's an elected board, are they autonomous from from the select board, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know in this regard because because of the emergency declaration, Mike. I don't know if you know, but we haven't heard back from from council on it. That's a little weird because I think the, the select board is considered the executive branch of the town. So technically, we are the tops, even though we we share with the both elected boards. So I'm just going to kind of add my two cents on the whole situation and everybody has their own opinions about when it's okay to go back together, when it's not okay. I used to be, let's get together right away, right away, then I got Corona and I changed everything because I honestly thought that me and my husband weren't going to make it at some point. Um, so I... I don't like the idea of going by the risk map. That's released every week after the cases are already out there. So to me personally, I don't, I don't see why we, we could. So we could have a meeting and we'd be in the yellow. And even though the meeting says we could have, I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. Like say we could have an open meeting with no more than 20 people, and they can only be invited guests. Who are speaking upon a meeting item? What if one of those guests has it, and now we're all infected, and now Norton was in the green, now we're in the yellow because all five board members are infected, and vice people are infected. So I I understand what the uh, the map is doing and the risk factor is. I don't think we should base it by that because unless we do it by a rolling basis, but even then, it's, it's, the cases are already there. Um, I love the idea of doing, like, the, oh, like, we're in person, but the public can't come. That I would feel more comfortable with. We stay our six feet apart. We wear our masks, or don't wear the masks if we're more than six feet apart, but I personally don't feel comfortable yet gathering while only, like, 20% of the people are fully vaccinated in the state, um, and we just don't know yet. We don't know. It, there's, there's, that's my personal thing. We're, there's just too many unknown factors. No, I, I think you brought up a lot, a, a lot of good points, right? One, it has to be something that's optional. Um, the other, you know, which we mentioned is, is not opening up to public, but only the public bodies, you know, which is similar to the, the virtual environment previously. and. From the, from the risk perspective, um, you know, in, in most cases when you're looking at this, you're looking at a 14-day average. Um, so, you know, there's some sustainability there to say, okay, we're, we're stable at that point. So that's that's something that can be considered too. I don't know, I'm surprisingly, I'm not as familiar with the Massachusetts data, if it's, if it's released by town um, to that level or if it's county. So we'd have to look at that. But these are all great ideas. And, you know, again, I'll... I'll take these. I can I can draft something up, and and we can work on it over the next the next few meetings. You know, and, and we'll get 
Uh, Mike, I'm sure Chris won't mind if, if we flip this in an email to them for, for their input too. No, that'd be that'd be fine. Uh, the other question I have is like, say say it's only like a, one of the like the assessors is a three member board. Um, so, I mean, if they can sit in a room that they're spread out, just yeah. So we have like maybe we put in um, it's not capacity requirements. What's the word I'm looking for? Limits. Participant. What would you say, Jack? Participant limits. Yes. So the, the other piece that, that um, I don't want to gloss over is the accessibility piece. I think what we've been able to achieve with the, the Zoom meetings is a far higher um, rate of part attendance and participation amongst people who otherwise would not be, be there. I think it's we've had a lot of great conversations. Um, speaking for, for me, um, I get warm cookies and a cup of tea brought down to me and no one's done that to me when I was in town hall I'm just saying Mike it would be nice <laughs> I've been looking over at those brownies all night <laughs> um, so I when and I have no doubt that at some point we're going to resume in-person meetings and I think that's um, when the time is right that's I'm fine with that um, I don't want to lose lose this uh, especially since we will probably be meeting in North Media Center or the library. Um, it's it's going to be hard to have folks with other commitments um, be able to be such an, an active or even a passive listener. Um, I'm sure some folks probably, you know, fire up a laptop, leave it in the kitchen, and then just go about their, their days and get bits and pieces. And I love that, um, especially as somebody without cable. Um, I can't turn, turn on the TV. So. I know it's probably going to be a challenge. I think Mike just went to go get one of those brownies. Good for him. Um, the Norton Media Center, um, they are funded through, um, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a grant or the fees from, from Xfinity. So it gets a little bit sticky if there's some sort of um, co-broadcast over a streaming service or Zoom um, at the same time. So maybe that's a conversation that we can revisit with, uh, with Jason in the coming weeks. And we, and we we did, Jack. We had a Zoom. I don't know if you remember. We had, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't a, a select board meeting. Um, but we were set up there with Zoom going as well. Yeah. Um, I think the issue was the you know the microphones, mm -hmm. right? Like it wasn't catching everyone. But maybe that's something that we put down too, right? That we tested and and um, we make sure we have that. I mean, you have. Like regardless, you have to have public access. So they're either we either have to do it, you know, if, if we start meeting in person, we either have to do it virtually or they have to come in and, and record it if we're not allowing the public to be in person. So I'm, I'm with you, though. I, I think it's been great. I think people appreciate it um, to be able to come on when they want. And, you know, I've seen people uh, sweeping their floors, doing dishes. So, but That's I listen. Right. That's right. We almost there at the independence and we got a hang tight for a few weeks and woods, the pandemic is almost over, so hang tight and we'll be back to the impressive meetings at the top media center. Right, Jack and the gang? All right, speaking of it's gonna pass before we get through this agenda. Oh, yep, I was gonna yep, say hold speaking on, on holding on for a few more weeks. <laughs> I just have one question. Hey Mike, if, if we if we proceed with this and we need equipment or something, is that is that um, fundable through CARES? It is. Yep. Okay. Okay, Mike's cups. Uh, he's, he's eating that brownie. He doesn't want. I know. To see I know. Keep eating. Renee, just a clarifying question: What you said? So we're able to do cable access on. Okay, so Norm Media Center has cable access for those who have cable, but we can also do Zoom for those of us like me who stream via YouTube TV or Fubo TV. Yes. No. Okay. Because I'm just going with the modern technology. There's a lot of people who cut the cord a while ago. Um, so just saying that Zoom, I think, is a little bit better than cable. But I love cable, too, because you get good packages and you get nothing. So. Right. And, and the other thing that Zoom allows, too, is for people who, who don't uh, necessarily have laptops, you can join on your phone. You can just call in if you want. If you have a landline, so you can call in. So I think it gives more options than what we had before to get people involved. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll put something in draft. It, obviously, um, I won't have anything back in like two weeks, but 
if you have other ideas or things that we should consider and I can just throw in there as placeholders, just let me know. But I'll, I'll start from the existing um, the temporary protocols that we have right now and then um, I'll, I'll try to follow up again with, uh, with town council and see if we can get an opinion on uh, on the parameters or purview of, of the, the declaration and, and the temporary protocols. And, and Mike, can you, if, if you hear of others who are, you know, interested in meeting in person, if you can share that and, and their reason why, I think that might help inform us too. Thank you. Great discussion, everybody. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm looking at the agenda because we are just now at the top of page three. Um, before we go any further, Mike, I see we have a discussion with um, a grant and Norton's designation as a green community. Um, I think those would be things that I would like to address earlier in a meeting with more people to receive. Is there anything time sensitive in there? And I apologize to, uh, to Chief Simmons who may have been on here for four and a half hours waiting for his grant discussion. And he's sick. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> No, he's falling asleep. No, don't no <laughs> worry. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sean. What you got to do? They can uh, do I mean, we can, if, if he, he's still on, we can do that. Uh, I was just trying to be respectful of um, trying to get All right. What, More can, visibility. Uh, yeah, can we, can we take care of Sean? Anybody mind if we go out of order so we can go to bed? Poor guy. No, please. All right. Uh, can we approve all the minutes before we talk about Sean? <laughs> no, because we're we still need to get item number one while we have the full board here. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll jump to C1, uh, grant order to Norton Fire Rescue Department from the Fire Safe, uh, Firefighter Safety Equipment Grant Program. <clears throat> I'm so we, sorry, we Sean. Sean. <laughs> How you guys doing? More than you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No, just um, we, we got a grant just under fifteen thousand um, dollars. Just got the word in last week. I will be using that to purchase new flashlights to replace um, the ones that are very old that we have now that go on the firefighters' gear. Um, they're pretty expensive flashlights. They have to be uh, intrinsically safe so they don't make a spark when you turn them on and turn them off. But you can use them in a hazardous atmosphere and such. So, um, the other thing we'll be buying with them uh, about four eighty-five. Uh, SCBA bottles, those uh, the air tanks that we use, and uh, the ones that we're replacing are the one-hour bottles. We have two smaller ones that we wear are half-hour bottles. Typically, we have some one-hour bottles for specific situations. Um, they're about two thousand dollars each, so um, it's pretty good that we'll be able to replace some of those. And uh, everything that we can get through the grants helps us uh, try to reduce a little bit of our capital request at some point in the road. So, um, unfortunately, a lot of the grants are very specific to what you can use them for. Uh, but we certainly try to target like capital items and stuff like that. So um, we also have another grant we'll be submitting in about oh, maybe a couple weeks or so for some more safety equipment. And um, probably a couple months from now, we'll be submitting a fire prevention grant as well. That'll be a little bit less, probably five to $7,000 range. So, um, but yeah, that's about it. And I'm pretty so any questions. So, so is this your third granted grant this year? Um, or second? Maybe, no, it's at least third, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive. So what I'm hearing is that having that position that you wanted specifically to help with grant writing is paying off? I would say so, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I think it's paid for itself. So it is also helpful on so many other things and uh, as well too. So grants just one uh, small piece of that that's, well, you know, again, I appreciate the support you guys gave us with adding that position. And uh, you know, we're trying to you know, get as much value out of it as we can. So. I think we're doing a good job of that. I think he's doing a great job, and so is Deputy Robbins. I think so, too. Don't give Deputy Robbins too much credit, uh, Sean. It's, <laughs> you know. it's just publicly. I tell him something different at first. <laughs> yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> no, uh, do, we, do we need to uh, vote to accept the grant, or is it we're good? No, you don't have to. Yeah, I don't think so on this one. In the way, the way Sean sounds, uh, should I assume he will not be at the ribbon cutting tomorrow at some? Oh, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> you go to bed, Sean. As long as I still make ibuprofen and electrical tape, I'll be good. <laughs> Have you tested yourself? Uh, I've been vaccinated like like two months ago. So. Oh, 
I'm good. All I have is the voice thing. I'm not. I'm good. So. You've seen that small percentage of people in, in healthcare who are getting um, COVID after they've been vaccinated, right? All right, I'll go get. I'll do it. To get on it tomorrow for you. Two words: hot and toddy. <laughs> That's right, though. Shot and tomorrow it's the summer wrap. Ribbon Ken and so many in Foxford. Eleven. That's right, buddy. Absolutely. And I'm gonna be there. <laughs> well, um, while I have you, real quick, I just mentioned one thing. Uh, probably the end of the month, I want to say uh, tentatively April 30th, we're going to try to do some live fire training. And, um, you know, it'll be, I think it's a Friday. Probably be from like 9 to 1. And uh, you're all welcome to attend. And, uh, you know, we can even get you geared up and participate on a on some of, somewhat of a level and stuff like that, too, if you'd like. So, yes. uh, it's an open invitation, in. right? It'd be fun. I'm in. And, uh, <laughs> what time was that again? <laughs> it's, uh, it should be tentatively it's, uh, April 30th from 9 to 1. It's going to be... Um, I don't know if you all know where that white farmhouse is near that highway close to Lennox Street. They're going to be tearing it down in a couple of weeks. So uh, when we get opportunities like that, we try to do some, some, we're not going to burn the whole place down, but we'll have some fires and barrels and we'll be doing some cool things using the thermal imaging cameras and stuff like that. So it um, might be a good opportunity for you to see on a different level what we do and, and stuff like that. So you're, you're all welcome to come. Sean, you're killing me. Yeah, I have one more now. day. What's I that? One, I have, you're killing me. I have one more day of grand jury service. Oh my and gosh, you're still doing that? It is April 30th at 9.30 in the morning in Fall River. Uh, can uh, I write a letter for you or something? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I want to hear the end of the case, so. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it'll be over fast, Jeff. There you go. You can always come by another day. Can I borrow a siren and I can just fly up? Where is it? <laughs> um, is it April 30th? It's going to be so and, and I have to share, I don't know if you guys know that um, Chief Simmons allowed me to come down for some training that he did with uh, their new Jaws of Life and some other tools. And let me just tell you, not only um, are those things incredibly heavy, but the uh, the crew there was awesome in like showing me how to do it. And uh, you know, when it looked like the door was going to overtake that machine, grabbing that machine for me and and making sure I didn't get crushed in the process. Um, so very cool. And. Uh, yeah, Jack, I'm sorry. I think uh, the four of us are going to have a really good time on April 30th with the, the chief and his team. We'll be thinking of you. Yeah. <laughs> make, make sure you post the meeting. You don't want to be an uh, open uh, meeting. We, no, no, we yeah, will not, not be discussing, we're not discussing anything. Town right, business. yeah. Look at me. <laughs> and if we are, we got the problems that we're talking about burning stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you for the invitation. I won't keep you. I'll try to send an email when I, it's 100% right. confirmed. So. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, have a good night. I hope you get off before midnight. Oh, John. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you feel you. better, Sean. All right. Congratulations, Thanks, Sean. Come on. Mom, April 30th, I plan to be there. <laughs> All right. Be safe, Peter. All right. Thank you for um, helping us get Sean to bed so he can attend some work for the company tomorrow. Uh, we'll jump back up to uh, old business, which is a discussion and or vote on special legislation for all alcohol package store licenses. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna recuse myself in this matter. You got it. Uh, Renee, do you wanna provide a little bit of background? Or Christine, I know you've, you've uh, attended some of these. Do you have the background? Is there anything else we can fill in for you before we discuss? Can I get a brief overview, please? Sure. Uh, Renee, you wanna provide that from an EDC perspective? Um, I, I can from a an EDC, do we want Mike to go first on the uh, on the introduction of this from the, it started from him and then filtered through the EDC. So. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike, are you still eating? Uh, <laughs> no, I, if you are, I can talk first. No, I, I did, I finished that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Christine, um, I was contacted by an attorney from Sharon who said they had a client that wanted to um, have an all alcohol license, uh, all alcohol package store license, and they were going to go into the mall, the little mini mall that was going to be built up the Blue Star Park. Uh, but we have no licenses available. Um, we have four by right, and another one um, that is an extra license that uh, we have, and uh, we don't have any available right now so um, he asked me to see if the board would be interested in applying for special legislation 
to be granted more licenses. And uh, so then I did contact Senator Feeney's office and asked him about that, and, uh, the procedure. And so then we started from there. So um, it, part of the discussion, and so one of the things that it came to the select board first and then select board asked um, to have the Economic Development Commission review it with, with Mike and Paul. Um, and a couple of things, Mike, I don't, I don't, I may have just not heard this, um, but one of the things that was recommended and that we discussed at the EDC was um, because of the, the process to pursue a special legislation license that um, it would be advantageous for us to actually pursue two at one time um, versus just the one. Um, that, was, that was from Senator Feeney's office. Okay. And... Uh, so when, when we discussed it at the EDC level, um, we did a couple things, right? Obviously, because it's special legislation, we wanted to um, conduct a review really to see um, in what areas of the town um, would it make sense to put the put, put the licenses, right? Because it's, um, I, I can't, my what's the name? It has to be, it's tied to um, like either a location, a, a general location in town or a specific parcel. Is that correct? Correct, correct. yep. So um, the, we didn't look from the specific parcel perspective, but we did look across the town and um, the EDC had voted to support um, pursuing two licenses um, and gave recommendations on three different areas. So one area was a Blue Star Parkway. Um, the other area was um, towards uh, North Attleboro down 123, so the opposite side. And then um, potentially on 140, um, not not 140 by Xfinity and the Great Woods Plaza because there there's some oversaturation there, but um, on the opposite side um, to support. And so those, that was a recommendation that came from EDC to the board. Um, that was kind of feels like it's been two months. I don't know if it's really been that long, um, but it's been quite some time. And then the last time that we talked about it on the board, um, we had a conversation about the location, about the number of licenses. Um, we we didn't take any votes um it was merely discussion and i think um what we left with at the time and mike correct me if i'm wrong but we had some questions uh in respect to special legislation so something that was that was kind of new to me was these licenses are provided um and essentially just given to to applicants or whoever um, they're awarded to versus if if a person wants to come into town and do business and purchase a license, it could be, you know, $500,000. So they're kind of giving it to them for free. And one of the things that we wanted to make sure of, um, it's twofold, right? Like the, we put in place a, a review process um, based on feedback that we had from a former select board member of, of how the process may have failed initially. Um, but also um, what I had asked Mike to follow up on was, could we put conditions um, in in the awarding of the, the, the license um, based on not just the location, but that they had to uh, twofold. It was, could they, um, I think the, the first part was that they would, we put a condition that they would have to um, essentially open shop um, within a year so that they weren't sitting on a license and, and we would be losing some revenue from that. And then secondly, um, that they had to keep that license for a, a determined amount of time, so say five years. So they didn't just get the license from us and then sell it and make, make a, a profit and then we're stuck you know, with a license in somebody else's hand and, and no actual facility. Um, so Mike, I know that town council came back with an answer on that. Um, I didn't have a chance to search my email. Do you have that available to review yeah, can, what they said? I, I can put it up. Okay. <clears throat> so can I just ask a clarifying question just because I remember part sure. of that and I remember part of what Mike said, but so are we essentially trying to make special legislation for this, for providing these to liquor licenses? Is that like the end goal? The, the end goal is that we would obtain um, one or two additional um, all alcohol liquor licenses through special legislation. Okay, got it. Thank you. 
and two other points to clarify. Um, so Michael Tool has previously expressed interest in securing a license for a possible business venture. Uh, he has disclosed that. He just contacted the State Ethics Commission. Uh, he recuses himself from, from all discussion um, of this. Um, further, this particular, we have, as while we may know that, we sort of have to divorce that understanding with the, the conversation of the special legislation. So as, as we talk about the legislation and if those licenses, um, I feel it's inappropriate to think about who those licenses may go to, because um, that, that is an entirely separate process. Yeah. Uh, and my, uh, go ahead. Uh, and, and, and the last thing is, with the total number of licenses that we have in town, uh, I believe if we do secure even one additional one that um, allows us uh, or requires us to offer a third uh, recreational marijuana retail establishment? Um, it, we have nine right now, right? Nine licenses, Mike? Bear wine and uh, uh, Yes. So we would need two more because we're, we already do, you have to round up, so we're already rounding up to 10 with 20%. So it would, it would be the second one that would then um, allow us to, um, and, and again, like keep in mind here um, that it's even even with these special legislation licenses we could get them and it doesn't necessarily mean that we i don't know what's the word might issue issue them right you don't have to issue it is that what is that what yeah. you're saying yep. yeah yes. it's up it's yep. up to the board yep so and that's that's true um you know with uh, with retailers but we did during our review with retailers the edc um, recommended three to the to the uh, board of uh, Jesus. Why am I saying board of selectmen? Uh, three to the select board, um, and and we did vote on the third one that if we had another um, the option to have another uh, retail marijuana establishment in town through license um, or one of the two that we had approved did not come to fruition. That the third one um, would auto we, we would automatically engage into an HDA. So there is uh, downstream impact. Christine, for context, um, I I'm against it. And the reason being is, I'm not saying I'm against it forever, but um, to be putting forth special legislation right now, in my opinion, for a liquor license is just, I just, I just find it, it's not the right time. I think we're still in the middle of a pandemic. We've got a lot of other things going on in town. Everyone's, um, so again, that was just my opinion. As I'm, I'm happy to, and I've stated this before. I like wine probably more than anyone on this call. Um, would love a really good, you know, wine store in town, but um, I just don't think this is the right time to be doing it. That's my opinion. Am I sharing the screen? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, and number D um, is, I think, what the attorney suggested, Renee to uh, address that area that you were talking about? I don't, I don't see a D, Mike. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I see C. <laughs> okay, let me. We're seeing uh, select board agenda packet page 77 of 99. Okay. So see, is it, it, it seems like we're in the right section, but I don't see a D. Okay, let me. Uh, I tried to do it from a Word document. Let me go back. Is it in the packet? Now, I remember here, and on one of the calls, Brad expressing his opinion about um, this whole issue. So I think I've heard that. Meg, I appreciate that. Renee and Jack, I think I've heard your opinions before, and obviously Michael is not here. So, But no, I appreciate, I appreciate everybody's opinion just so I get the... the full picture of everything because it's hard coming in when you when you only know about three-fourths of the facts <laughs> yeah it, it is and i mean you know just just like my my opinion is um not just like my but but we we have opposing opinions because i'm looking at it from an economic perspective so specifically with the blue star parkway 
um, we have a building there and they aren't going to break ground on that building until they have a commitment from somebody who's going in it, right? So this could potentially be that commitment. And once we break, it, break ground, we start to um, collect fees on building permits and things like that, as well as property tax goes up. So there are other um, residual or, or um, related um, revenue streams that happen um, with this process. And that's why I think it's important to know if, if we did it too, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that we're, we're going to issue the two or, or grant the two, um, but it gives us an option to do that if, if we wanted to. And, and you know, bottom line is we need revenue in the town um, and I understand, you know, Meg's saying about um, the pandemic, but, you know, you look at the economy, anything that we can do, in, in my opinion, to promote growth, um, it's going to bring, bring jobs to the area from a construction perspective and, you know, again, people to the area, hopefully, to, to purchase things. So um, I, I think I think we're actually, it would have been great, you know, to have this a year ago when we started in the pandemic and then have something already open that, that's, that's bringing more money into the town. And since we're, we're sharing, I think I fall somewhere in the middle. Um, I think um, being able to lock in something um, in the Blue Star development uh, for all the reasons that Renee has said, um, I, I support that. I where I lose a little bit of the argument is with, with additional licenses. Um, I'm most concerned with diluting the existing businesses that we have, and, and by nature, as we're talking about um, a different type of venture here, they are all small business owners, and I think a number of them are live in this community. Um, I know the argument is that if we get three licenses, there's zero obligation that we need to issue them. Um, and that feels, I don't know, I, I'd be much more comfortable going with one that knowing that we have that potential area and we can tie it to Blue Star with that development. That's, that's about where I would fall. And Ms. Tree, you guys said that you could vote, you'd prefer to vote on two or to make it efficient, you'd vote on two, but you could vote on one with the potential in the future to vote on another one. Is that correct? That the recommendation that Mike got from the senator was if if we're putting in the effort essentially to get one license, we should pursue two. Okay. N not saying that we have to grant either or, um, but, you know, I identify, you know, depending upon what the legislation says, right, identify two areas of town. Um, and certainly when we were talking about it the last time, like, I mean, Blue Star is a, a given, right? And potentially with, with the mascot property, you know, should that be rezoned and, and sold to a developer, um, I think there are opportunities there too. So I, I would, I would um, if we move forward with one of these, I, I think we need to be careful in the language that we're not saying Blue Star because it could be the development across the street. You know, it's the same area. Um, you know, maybe maybe more, more language in respect to um, east of a 495 exit, you know, near Leonard Street or something like that. I, I don't know how it would be worded, but it's something to consider, right? Because there, we potentially um, can have those two areas. And then additionally, um, we were contacted, Michael and I were contacted um, from uh, one of the trustees um, of the, the Kings, it, I, I never get the name right, but the Kingsbury so Condo Association. And they own that corner lot on Leonard Street across from Blue Star. And, and they have, um, they've been approached um, to, for somebody to purchase that property, which also then, you know, could be developed. So again, we have potential in that area. Um, when I think about the town, like when we were looking at, at the areas um, the last time on the board, the on the opposite side of 123, you know, and we've talked about it from an EDC perspective, like, that area has been hit pretty hard and you know what are some potential opportunities like i think if we went for a second license that that would be a, a good area to look at um rather than the on the other side of 140 where I, I don't think we have as much um in the way of commercial right but uh it, it's truly it's, it's up to the board you know what we decide zero one two i mean it's it's our decision okay sorry mike there we see d now so I'm not uh, I'm not an attorney. So, but 
this is what he suggested to uh, answer that question, that the license granted pursuant to this act shall be issued within one year after the effective date of this act, provided, however, that if the licensee, the license is, or, is originally granted within that time period, it may be transferred or reissued to a new applicant per, pursuant to subsection B or C any time hereafter. So, I, I don't know whether that answers that question. I, I, the question, I don't know if you had mentioned it, was we don't want to give someone a license that they just sit on and don't act on it within a year. So give them a year. If we issue a license, you've got a year to get open. Mm -hmm. So the answer made sense with the first part until you hit the semicolon, and then it kind of lost me. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else felt the same way, but. Yeah, it sort of said the exact opposite, I think, of what it was intended yeah. to. Yeah. Um, I, I would also like to propose that perhaps we put language in there that that one year term could be extended um, with approval from the board. Um, just thinking, we all know that either funding delays or construction delays happen. I think if there is a, a license holder that is making um, substantial progress towards utilizing the license, uh, I think that should be within our discretion to allow them to maintain it beyond that one year period for yeah. call it a, a, a three year, six month extension. Yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. And Mike, I, I think um, Town Council actually gave us that similar language for the HDA as well. Okay. Right, because in, in our thought was, was similar. Um, I think we thought of it more as we don't want them to get stuck in our process, right, in the length of time going through our permitting, permitting process, yeah. um, depending upon how many projects there are in front of the boards. Maybe use language, uh, you know, the license holders making a good faith effort towards utilizing said license um, subject to extension. Are you talking legal because it's 11 o'clock at night or because you just wanted to go legal on us? Uh, I don't even know, Renee. I can't feel my feet <laughs> anymore. And I take and then, it back. I said D. I didn't say small D or lowercase D. Right. right. <laughs> Did they answer anything in respect to uh, it, it not not being sold for a profit within so many Let's see. years or Let, let, let me go from uh, the top. Okay. So here you are uh, under lowercase b. Um, once issued, the licensing authority shall not approve the transfer of the license issued under this section within one year after the date of issuance of such license by the licensing authority. And we shall not approve the transfer of the license issued under this section to any other location outside the area described. I would think if, if we're saying you have to open up in a year, I would think that this this should read more than a year, right? Two or three, wouldn't it? Um, well, his only question I, in his email was that if you say that and then whoever the licensee is has some issue, and they can't operate anymore, um, then you're going to have a vacant storefront. Could we make a contingent on, say, like when it opens? So first, uh, within one year of date of operation. That way it slightly divorces the two from that one year period and it gives them um, like a year is a reasonable time. But it doesn't stop them from selling that license for profit six months after being granted the license. Right? And that's that's what we didn't want to happen. Right. No, I, I think it's saying that they can't sell it for a profit within one year of starting their operation. So not when the license is issued. If the license is issued January 1st, uh, they open on June 1st, then I would say that until June 1st of next year, they need to hold on to that license. Does that, right. is, is that making sense? 
Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But what what stops them from selling it before opening in June? Like you're saying, the one year starts from when they open. I'm saying, I don't want to. I don't want us to issue a license, and and five months later they sell it because they can get a profit. Mm -hmm. So say you just tweak it to say you are license holder is un, unable to sell a license for a profit until one year after the start of operation. You just change the wording around so it's from issuance to one year after operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make sense. Is there, a, I don't know if it's allowed to say like, they're, like if a license is issued, they're not allowed to transfer a license without the approval of the select board? Is that within our scope? Yep. Yeah, we, we would have to approve any transfers that would come through. But we just want to put like a time limit on it, essentially. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, so to, to, to Renee's point, since the license is, you know, functionally cheap or free for whoever is, is getting this new license, whereas the last um, beer and wine license we had in town sold for uh, over $100,000. So there's, there's real material value associated with it. I think the concern is we just don't want somebody to come in with no intention of opening a business, getting a license for a couple hundred dollars, and then flipping it immediately to for a profit to, to someone else. Do you want me to email this um, to you and you can mark it up? I, I'll send it back to him with suggestions that you have. So, I would be open to that, but I'd also like to sort of get a read for where where the board stands if if this is going to go forward. Um, if if both Meg and Christine are are not supporting this, then I I don't think it makes sense to to waste the time or to spend the time on that wasting. The other, the other piece, um, you know, just a couple of small, a couple businesses in town that I've talked to the owners, there's a real sort of um, feeling that we don't really do anything for existing businesses in town, and it, it's, you know, I, I've heard a lot of uh, scuttle about people leaving town that are not happy with certain issues, and my, again, my whole point is this would just sort of exasperate that whole notion that you know, we're all about trying to bring in new business, but we're not even caring about the business that already exists. So, again, I, I'd be a hard no on this one. Meg, it's, that's an interesting point you brought up because we actually, um, as one of our four um, priorities for 2021, um, we we have on there to, uh, from an EDC perspective, uh, we have to improve the relationships with the current business owners and, and as part of that, bringing them onto a meeting to talk about some of their challenges or where we can provide support. Um, I, I think that's just something that it is going to take some time. Um, I know there's been conversations of others who are operating in the town who would like an opportunity to apply for this license. Um, you know, we're not saying that it's, we're, if, if we choose to tie it to a location, we're not saying that it is then tied to a specific applicant, right? Like, I, I think I really yeah, no, again, again, I'm not, I'm not even looking at that, and 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 I, I, I applaud your efforts because I know the businesses in town want, to, they, they haven't had anyone come and talk to them before, and so they're sort of frustrated. Um, again, goes back to my initial point: why are we rushing this now? Why can't we wait to the fall meeting to put this forth? That's all. I'm just saying this is just to me not the right time. But yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's the timing of when you join the board because this is, it's been over a year and a half. On this particular item, but understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I like that. Was one of the main things that I was like, I guess, personal goals or like stances is support local businesses and support this community. Like, I we we do need revenue. That is 100 percent true. We do need revenue. We need to think on how to get that revenue and it might have to be getting new businesses but like Meg said we, we have to show support for the businesses that are already here so it's just finding that line of 
how do we support the local businesses that are here, promote them, as well as work with these new businesses that are going to bring us more revenue, especially different businesses that are coming in, like, you know, marijuana, like anything in the Blue Star Park, because that's, you know, they're all different businesses. Um, so if there's like a way, you know, I, I, I would love the idea. I'm just trying to think of like the, the liquor stores that we have, although some of them are very um, restrictive on their size, like like um, like Michelle's, you know, is in the plaza, and then the other one on 123 near like Pizza Time and Dunks, and I can never never remember the name of it. You know, that's a small building. Um, that's a that's a beer and wine. Yeah, I, think I would that's love. An I have, I've said this before, I'm not opposed in terms of, you know, yes, I agree, we do need something. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I just, at, at this particular town meeting, I, don't, I just don't think this is the right time to be like, hey guys, like everything else going on in the world, we're going to um, put a special, you know, legislation. I just think it's not the right time. To, 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 well, two questions. To go against, to, to kind of go against that, uh, people will say the same thing about, the taxes getting increased. It's not a good time, but we're doing it anyways. Um, so I, that went right up when that passed. I was like, well, that argument went right out the window because I thought the same thing. I was like, this is not a good time. I voted yes for it. Like all, all my family voted yes for it. So I thought it was a horrible time to do it, but it needs to get done. Um, this also might be one of those things where it might need to get done. Um, but then the other thing, do we have any all liquor stores? Or, or, Right, we have, that those correct we, yeah, all, all, all we have five. Okay. Mike said earlier we have four by right, meaning we have four based on our population, and then we have one special legislation, which is the uh, produce farm. Okay. Right, Mike? Correct. Right. Okay. So it's Michelle's, the produce farm, Norton Liquors. Uh, Norton Liquors. Where are the other two? Um, the corner store, health produce store. Speedway. Barrowsville. This oh, is all liquor. Barrowsville's all liquor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Speedway's beer and wine? Yeah. What's the last one? I thought all of us are like mentally driving around town. <laughs> I don't know, but I could, I, <laughs> I, could, I could use a drink right now. <laughs> oh. This one? I, I, ha hold, I have this in a presentation. Let me find it real quick. I can let you know. I'm opening up my PDF right now. Want to race? Uh, what about Chartley? I don't think Chartley got anything. They don't have any, no. Well, they're not there now. <laughs> so we have Norton Liquors, Produce Barn. Sorry, I'm trying to follow along. Barrowsville. Michelle's Corner Store. Cozy Corner. Michelle's Corner Store. So what's the last one? One over by the Dunkin' Donuts on the other side of town. Quick stop, but that's just beer and wine. Well, yes, I thought they had hard alcohol. Norton Liquors Produce Barn. Barrowsville. Michelle's Corner Store. So I have four. And then what, he, what's mass gas? I think they're also one in mouth. Let me double check. Are we off on our number? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a license ready to go after all this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Jen, you have nine licenses, right? I'm checking that right now. So we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to open up, I have the PowerPoints here. Let's see if this shows as well. Would this solve the issue if we only have four? Um, no, they're, they're definitely no. all issued. <laughs> you guys realize we've been in meetings for like over five hours now. Five hours, 12 minutes? Like, we, we don't even do this at work without a break. We haven't even taken, I mean. <laughs> I think everyone's about to take a break. 
Right. I have four. I'm showing. I'm showing five beer and wine, and four. The four that we talked about. I think we only have four. Yeah, I know it's nine total, and I thought it was flip flop. I thought it was four, and then wine malt was five. That probably makes sense because uh, our population is under 20, so you would have one for five, one for 10, one for 15, and then the uh, special legislation one. Uh, so getting the sense that there's um, some unease around moving forward this uh, with, at this time is, would we be more comfortable um, pushing this off uh, to the fall town meeting. And Mike, does that have any negative implications with the conversation that you would have with the interested party? Um, no, um, there hasn't been a permit pulled on the, that building yet, so I don't, <clears throat> I don't know how rushed it is, but I'll, I'll just mention it to him and get back to you, but I don't, I, obviously if you tell someone they're gonna say, ah, oh, but um, I'll mention it to him and see what he says. Yeah, I'm just trying to get us to a point where yeah. where there's a yes, and I don't I don't necessarily think that there there is, and I don't want to have a negative connotation going back to them. Um, and and, and Mike, oh sorry, Jeff. No, go ahead. I'm just gonna ramble. I was just gonna ask what what did they um, did Senator Feeney indicate how long these typically take to get through the review process and approval? Um, it does take a while. Um, I'll I'll check with him again, but it's at least six months, probably. That six months would be quick for the legislature. So just and I'm you know I'm I'm fine too. If we if we decide to move it, I would say let's take it off the warrant so there's no confusion. Um, the so if we have a six month lead time, right? I would imagine just based on the uh, the RFI process that we had for the marijuana retailers, if we if we put a similar process in place, you're looking at another um, four to six months, right, to go through to to collect. Uh, Mike, what is it? Sixty or ninety days that you have to have it open to collect applications? Yes. Yes. I, I, it was. I, he said. I think he said sixty days, but. Okay. With the legislature, you figure if you, if if this if we have everything ready to go in October, um, hopefully I'll ask him what their timeline is for accepting bills. You know because their session would end. Oh, that's right. In in June, so. Right, I I do remember reading that now. So uh, so we're we're probably looking more at eight months through the legislature, four to six months for us to do a review process. And then um, if if we issue it to that location specifically where we don't have a building, where I would say at best 14 months, right, for build. Yeah. Right, so we're looking, just, just so you guys know, like it's, it's fine to, to push it off um, five months, um, but we're looking at a total of potentially 28 months before we would have yeah. a business up and running. So that would be 2024. That my math is off. It's too late. I mean, it's too late. That's what I All right. <laughs> All right. Um, what article number was that, Mike? That was on the annual. It is article 12, I think. But let me make sure. I'm going to get through an answer a different way. Um, so, Chair would entertain a motion to keep Article 12 on the annual town warrant. Article 12. Just, just mean to support Article? It's 11, Jack. It's 11. We'll leave 12 alone. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to keep Article 11 on the annual town warrant. Which is special legislation to increase the girl license quota. Yes. Uh, so moved. Second. Right. So a motion and a second. Um, Christine? Uh, I, 
So if, you're this, if you say yes, it stays on. If you say no, you then lose fall. We, I would make a se separate motion to move it to the fall. Okay, then no. Okay. Meg? No. Renee? Yes. Alright, um, I would say yes, but um, motion does not carry. So, Chair, I'm saying a motion to move. Just, I, I would just remove it from this chat yeah. because yeah, we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Remove Article 11, uh, special legislation uh, for all alcohol package store licenses. You realize that this can fail too, right? I know, and we're, I, I know, but we're not. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, but, I'll switch my vote. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. I don't, I don't mind supporting it. You know, I, I, I'd rather have the board be comfortable with it. Um, you know, just understanding the, the long-term impact. Um, okay, did you get a motion? Or? I did not. You just started giving me lip. Oh, that's I didn't actually hear. I, I actually, you guys, you guys all froze for a second. I'm sorry. What happened? <laughs> oh, we, we already said that it's staying on the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> Seven licenses. So, so I, I move, I move um, to remove Article Level uh, Article Eleven special legislation to increase the liquor license quota from the annual town meeting. Second. Motion in the second. Do the vote proceed? Yes. Meg. Yes. Renee. Yes. I too shall vote yes. All right. So that is one problem done. Uh, we're skipping town manager's report. But Jack, if I may just add, the, the reason I, I asked talking to remove about. The, right. Um, the reason I asked to remove it and not to say to tie it to the fall town meeting because if there's a possibility for whatever reason we have a special town meeting in between and, and we feel comfortable with it, then we can bring it back. Yep. Nope. That, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. That's cool. All right, uh, Mike. Let's uh, talk about the designation as a green community for another day. I'd like to get that um, towards the start of a meeting. Okay. Information. Yeah. Um, select board report and mail. Does anyone have anything that they want to bring up tonight? Anybody at all? I, I'm going to say emphatically no. All right. I'm not seeing anything, so we will move on. Warrants and minutes. Uh, I have approved payroll warrants PR 21 21 for the week ended April 3rd, 2021. Warrant dated April 8th, 2021. In the amount of one million four hundred sixty-six thousand two hundred three dollars and two cents, invoice warrant AP twenty-one dash fourteen, dated April eighth, twenty twenty-one, in the amount of uh, six hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred ninety-eight dollars and seventy-five cents, invoice warrant AP twenty-one dash forty-two dated April 15, 2021, in the amount of $165,717.41. Uh, minutes. Are we ready to, to tick off some of these guys? So um, we, we talked a couple meetings ago, or well, I don't know how many meetings ago it was, um, about posting these in draft form. Have, have they been posted in draft form? They have. Yes. Okay. I usually get a notification, but I haven't been getting them lately, so I don't know if something changed on on the site. Um, uh, Jack, I, I I, got I'd like to. You are getting them in your emails mm -hmm. when it goes up? I'm going to have to figure out what happened. Um, I'd move to approve uh, December 10th, 2020. Oh, a oh second. second. Motion in a second. Uh, Christine? Yes. Meg? Yes. Michael? Aye. Renee? Aye, uh, yes. Uh, and I too shall be a yes. Um, so I've, I've read up through February 25th, and I've had no issue. Um, I had, um, and I never sent these to Jen, but they're sitting in front of me, the um, updates for the, the January 21st one. Changes to that. So, how about uh, I'll obtain a motion to approve the minutes uh, from the following meetings February 18, 2021, open session, February 18, 2021, executive session, and February 25, 2021, open session. So moved. Second. Uh, Christine? Yes. 
Meg? Yes. Michael? Hi. I'm going to abstain. Uh, so yes. So. All right. I think we'll leave it at that for tonight. And by the grace of whatever deity you may believe in, uh, we have come to the end. Our next meeting is Wednesday, April 21st. The joint meeting with the Finance Committee uh, and the Permanent Building Committee folks will be there. I believe it will be uh, Christine, Meg, and myself representing the select board. Um, if that, Mike, if we could find a way to have that be a short one, that's my daughter's 10th birthday. So I would like to be able to have some cake and ice cream. You're getting cookies, Jack. I'm sure that you can have cake and ice cream. You just might not be able to celebrate, which would be even worse. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's the next meeting after that? Is it the following Monday? It is. Okay, and then, so we have Monday and then Thursday of that week. So the 26th and... 29th. 29th? Okay. And the 26th is the public hearing? Yes. Okay. We're going to need to squeeze in a FinCon meeting on the 28th, or can we stick to two meetings that week? Um, I'm trying to think of what they scheduled for. Let me look at my calendar. If we've gotten far enough ahead of them with some of these one articles, right. maybe we don't need to actually be there for the entire thing. I know they've scheduled meetings every Monday till the week before town meeting just to have it scheduled but they may not need them they're not they're not meeting on the 19th though right mike no not from patriots day no is, is town hall open no that's a, a recognized holiday yes Massachusetts. you midwesterners don't know <laughs> no we don't it get that freebie it was never recognized in cambridge because they were not, they didn't actually participate in, in uh, evacuation day. Just to know really? that. Yes. So. Well, that that's evacuation. City of Cambridge is open. This is Patriots. No, that's Patriots. This is that's evacuation day when uh, that that no, 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 okay. just happens to be near St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, what am I thinking no, about? no. The British, the British had tried to attack Dorchester. And <laughs> they stopped them, and that's the celebration the day after St. Patrick's Day, it happened on St. Patrick's Day. So in Suffolk County, it's a holiday. Yes. So wait, what is coming up? Patriots Day on Monday? Patriots Day. Patriots, Patriots Day. Okay. That's and then we know State if we have a hurricane, Cambridge, because they don't participate in evacuation <laughs> day, is not going to get out. No, but Cambridge is open on, on Patriots Day. Because it's, it's in Middlesex County. It's but... Cambridge is in Suffolk County. No, we're talking about two different holidays. No, no, but no, no. That's what I'm saying. Evacuation Day is celebrated in Suffolk County, in yeah. Middlesex County. All right, maybe I, maybe I misspoke. They don't celebrate. There, that's why they don't celebrate Evacuation Day. All right, forget Evacuation Day. They don't celebrate Patriots Day. Whichever one's coming up, they don't celebrate, and you're going to be working. Don't. Working. We, I have to always have to navigate through the Boston Marathon to get to friggin' work. It was a nightmare every it's year. A, it's still a state holiday. Yeah. It's not that the city of Cambridge does not participate in this holiday. Cambridge has their own rules. Yes, they do. <laughs> well, I'm going to move that we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> oh, thank God. I was Can I ask a quick bored. question? Oh, I'm really no, sorry. No. Time is up. <laughs> no questions. Okay. I'll just send it to the one head now. So are we not every... Thursday now? Is it just Thursdays as, like, every other Thursday? Are we back to that? Fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. good. Yep. Yeah, the, goal, the, the intent is every other Thursday uh, with uh, the election cycle and then town meeting, things get yeah. a little bit densely packed, um, so you really get thrown right into it. Um, typically, it settles back down into a more regular pattern um, after town meeting and through through the summer and we pick back up again for the fall. Okay. I'll just look for the emails for when, when I gotta show up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hopefully we can get back to in person means just in time for summer and fall, right? I hope yeah. so. Uh, in the meantime I did hear a motion to adjourn. Did I hear yeah, a second? Second. <laughs> second. Uh, um any discussion on the motion? Uh, Christine? Yes please and thank you. Meg? Yes. 
Michael? No. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say, because this isn't, doesn't need to be recorded. When you do that, Michael, it's, it's like annoying for the person doing minutes because I've had to do that for the EDC, and I say yes, Jeff. I, I say yes, Michael is annoying, and I also say yes, we should have done Good night, night guys. everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Peter. Be safe. Good night, Peter. Hey, Michael and Jack. Pandemic is winding down, and we got to be vigilant for a few more weeks. Right, everyone?